Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're going to be talking about peppermint. So it's early August here in Southern Ontario, and this is the perfect time for me to be harvesting my peppermint. So I thought before I came out and cut all of this beautiful herb back that I would teach you a little bit about this plant and some of its medicine. So when I'm harvesting peppermint for tincture, I actually want the plant to go to flower. So if you've never seen peppermint flower before, I'm gonna get my husband to zoom in and take a look. This is what peppermint looks like in flower. So a really great way to identify mint species is to check out the stem. They're always square. So anything in the mint family is going to have a square stem to it. In terms of making medicine for tinctures, I want the um, broadest range of chemical constituents possible, which is why we wait for it to go into flower. I could still harvest the leaves for tea at this point and it would be lovely and tasty. So for tinctures, I tend to take about the top 30 to 40% of the plant and we use the leaves, the flowers, the whole, the whole bit. And um, in terms again of growing mints, it's really important that we are aware of the botanical names, especially with the mint family, because there's so many different types of mints. There's chocolate mints, mojito mints, you know, strawberry mints, anything you could possibly think of, they've made some kind of mint plant from it. So when you want to shop for your medicinal mint species plants, it's really important that you know the botanical names. So in this case, peppermint is known as Mentha cross piperita. The cross is gonna look like an X. The reason for this is that peppermint is actually a sterile plant, so you cannot buy seeds for this plant. You can only buy uh, seedlings that are usually propagated by cuttings or um, you know, it's, it spreads quite readily by rhizome. And so if you've ever purchased peppermint seeds before, you've been duped. If I remember correctly, it is a cross between water mint and spearmint. I may have to correct that in the notes below because I've just thought of that off the top of my head, but it is a cross, that's what the cross means in the name. So Mentha cross piperita. So when you're shopping for your mint family species, you know, you don't have to know how to spell them. You don't even really have to know how to say them or pronounce them. But in terms of shopping, you just want to know that they exist. Because if you're just buying a mint, what does that mean? Did you buy spearmint? Did you buy wild mint? Did you buy peppermint? Did you buy mojito mint? So it's really good to know um, the botanical names. So I've talked a little bit about how to identify it, looking for that square stalk. And of course, taking a close look at the leaves. And any of the aromatic plants, they're really, really high in volatile oils, also known as essential oils. And so by rubbing the leaf and smelling it, I mean, it's such a fragrant, fragrant plant. So I'm going to go in now and talk a little bit about some of the medicinal properties of peppermint. So what is one area that we know peppermint is good for? It's really good for your tummy. Yeah, like what, what, kind, of, what kind of things would I use it for, for you? Oh, well of gas and it stops that from happening. It does. So um, we'll talk, we'll first start by talking about the digestive properties of peppermint because this is the one area that everybody knows peppermint for is helping with our tummy. Now when my son said it helps with things like gas that's because it's known as a carminative and carminative herbs really help with functional digestive issues, gas, indigestion, bloating, all that type of stuff. It's also a digestive antispasmodic. So if you've ever had that kind of cramping of feeling in your digestive tract, it would really help to reduce cramping. Um, it is also an antiemetic. So it really helps with things like um, nausea and feelings of just like nauseated type feelings. So things like morning sickness, car sickness, that type of stuff. Now, what I've found super fascinating about um, some of the studies that are being done on plants these days is that you know scientists are sort of patting themselves on the back when they've realized now that there's a connection between the gut and the brain right well plants knew this long ago most of our digestive plants our carminative type plants our um, anything that supports the digestive system also supports the nervous system so peppermint is actually one of my very favorite plants for depression anxiety 
um, poor memory, poor concentration, increasing blood flow to the brain. Uh, and pepper. Yeah, it's really, really good for just supporting, generally supporting the nervous system. So I love using, <coughs> using it for that. <laughs> Another area where peppermint shines is the respiratory system. Uh, it's a, and, and when I say respiratory system, I do mean general cold, flu, that type of thing. It's a broad spectrum antimicrobial, so it's gonna help fighting with viruses, bacteria, all those types of things. It is a febrifuge, which means it's gonna help us with fevers. It's a really good expectorant, so it's gonna help with loosening mucus in the, in the chest cavity and helping to expel mucus that way. It is also um, a really decent little decongestant as well and an anti-allergenic herb. So it's gonna help with allergies, seasonal allergies, those types of things too. So my husband's gonna show you another close look at peppermint because lots of times people don't see them in flower. So we talked about the digestive system, the nervous system. I did mention, of course, it's gonna be good for all types of feverish conditions, colds, flu, bronchitis, asthma, because of its really great um, bronchodilating type properties. And again, those expectorant properties. It also makes for a nice infused oil. So if you wanted to infuse your peppermint into oil, it would be really good for like a vapor rub in combination with other herbs, a, a vapor rub type. Um, uh, sorry, salve, and I really like using it in muscle rubs too because it has what's known as a mild rubefacient um, properties to it. So rubefacient simply means that it helps to draw blood to an area um, topically. So when we discuss that internally, we use different terms, but in that sense, it'd be good for a muscle rub in combination with things like Arnica, St. John's wort, cayenne, you can add some peppermint. So you have that heating, cooling action in your salve. And in general, I mean, you can use it in bath salts, you can use it in infused oils just as a nice cooling moisturizer. So there's lots of really great um, properties. This year, one of the things I'm thinking about making is, I really like making oxymels. Do you remember what an oxymel is? No? So oxy means acid and mel means honey. So that means we're gonna be using vinegar and honey together as the extraction medium and I thought about yeah I had thought about doing um, an aromatic oxymel this year with a combination of lemon balm peppermint spearmint and maybe even some anise high sop like think about how killer that would be not killer in a bad way killer in a good way to support the respiratory system I'm just admiring my plants they look so lovely so I'll be harvesting them today and I'm just just in case of the oh yeah, we're just chasing the cat here a little bit. So what's really great is peppermint is also a very safe plant. There's no known toxicity. We just tend to use it with caution um, in pregnancy. You know, consult a herbalist if you're pregnant and you want to use peppermint medicinally. The odd cup of peppermint tea is perfectly fine, but we may not use it that frequently just because of some of its antispasmodic properties. And whenever we have herbs um, that have actions in specific areas. So in this case, it would be things like um, the nervous system, so antidepressant, anxiolytic, so anxiety. You just wanna be cautious um, when combining with medications that do the same thing as those herbs. So thank you so very much for joining me today and spending some of your day with me as I chat about peppermint. Uh, don't forget that you can subscribe to the channel. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all that jazz. And of course, I'm now on Patreon as well. Uh, I appreciate all the support that I've been given, the thumbs up, the likes, and the sharing of my videos. So until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs. Music